Hello everyone and welcome back today for round 11 here in the Group B GT Sport Championship at Gavra Racing. We're here in Spain. We've only got four rounds to go after this one. The first start, well the start, sorry, of the Group 3 side of the championship. We've been in Group 2, we've been in Group 4, now it's time for the Group 3 cars to show us what they can do for the final five races of this 15 race, uh, well 15 track to Canada. Some facts about this track before we get into qualifying. We have 16 corners that make up this track in Spain. 2.68 miles is the total track length. 0.4 of those miles take up the longest straight, uh, consisting of the start finish straight at the final corner towards turn one. And only 158 foot of elevation change occurs here at this track, mainly towards the end of the first and the middle sector. You can see a little bit of a downslope here in the final chicane as well. Seven drivers on the grid tonight, including this man, Websons, who usually races in Group A, but has decided to, to come down and give it a go here in Group B. First out on track is Wolfie907, your current championship leader as well, leading the way to his teammate Ted in second place. He's opting for the Alfa Romeo for the Group 3 start of the championship. Dutchie using the Alfa Romeo from Group A as well. So it uh, looks like Wolfie's maybe taken some advice or something from Dutchie and decided to opt for the Italian car himself. Meanwhile, the scout down in the Peugeot. Similarly with Ted, only two drivers in the Peugeot. Uh, so actually an interesting car, good, good choice. Maybe not the best looking, but uh, with their liveries, uh, I'm sure they've made it what they have made it uh, much more pleasing to look at. Kyla Love has opted to go in the Mercedes. No, he's not. He's in the Mazda RX Vision, sorry. Uh, same car that Tim was in yesterday's race. And uh, it is ND, sorry, who is no ND. So it's Melex Andils who is in the Mercedes. Uh, the Mercedes AMG GT3 and the Martini themed Mercedes with some Mercedes stars at the back as well, following on from the 2020 F1 Mercedes. And ND's in possibly my favorite car, my, one of my favorite uh, GT3 cars, actually. It's a GT, uh, a Nissan GTR. Uh, very oversteery car, not much rear grip, but its turning is absolutely beautiful. If you like an oversteery car, I would recommend the Nissan GTR Group 3. It should do quite well around this track. It did, it, it's usually one of those manufacturers, uh, well, sorry, one of those cars that does well in the manufacturer's event. So let's see what ND can do here in tonight's race. Uh, but meanwhile, Wolfie sets the first time on the board, uh, puts in provisional pole, which is beaten by Kyla Love, who is on the super soft tyres for this uh, qualifying session, meaning that he will start the race on the super softs. Provisional pole is a 1.45.6, uh, five tenths clear of Wolfie, who's on the medium compound tyres. Everyone else on the medium tyres. Webson's into the pits and has uh, rear suspension and aero damage. Not sure quite where he got that from. Uh, but I said this in yesterday's stream, just listen to the engine on this Mazda. Let's just change cam to there. Just give this a listen. And that, however, despite the beautiful engine noises, is not what you want to be doing. Uh, running a little bit wide through turn four, something that's really easy to do, especially in these group three cars. You think you've got the turn in, uh, but occasionally you will just put the power down a bit too early and run wide. That's uh, quite a few of these corners. It's actually quite easy to do. Turn three, four, five, nine, and twelve. Those are the main corners, which are really easy to understeer around this track and lose uh, lose the rear end. How unless you're in the car the attendees in, then your turning should be quite nice. However, it's the rear grip you have to watch out for. Uh, Andy running a little bit wide onto the astral turf, kicking up a little bit of gravel. Kind of love flashing his headlights, possibly alerting Dan to pull over to one side. However, Dan does not need to do so, as he is on a legitimately timed lap uh, in the Peugeot. Kind of did have a penalty, has been able to serve that penalty though in the final sectors. As everyone stay out, everyone stayed out and will complete another lap. Wolfie is not improving. What about Dan? Is he improving? He does improve, but doesn't uh, improve on his position. Uh, Kyle Love is 1.4 seconds down on his fastest time. Let's keep an eye on ND through the final sector. Does actually come into the pits. Ted across the line didn't improve. He was seven tenths off of his personal best. And Webson's is on an outlap. Webs uh, Melix Andil has come through the middle sector, uh, final sector, 
is going to come into the pits from the medium compound tyres. Something I haven't done was checked if my audio is all up and running. Um, I hope it is, but I will do that in just a few minutes. So let's get back to the action. And uh, to be five tenths off pole on the mediums isn't actually a bad time from Wolfie, to be perfectly honest. There is quite a substantial difference in some tracks between the fastest and slowest compound of tyres. Others, not so much, but that does make all the difference. Uh, can confirm my audio is okay on my end. If it's not on yours, uh, please feel free to let me know in the chat and I will try and adjust it as best as I can. Uh, down the exit of turn nine onto the back straight. Wolfie's not improving on his time. What about Dan? He could be improving. He is only 500 off of his personal best, which was set on the last lap. 146.3 gets the rear out a little bit on the exit of the hairpin at turn 10. It'll be interesting to see if they change it to the new layout that they've opted for for next GT game. They might do, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, that looks like a lack of, lack of grip coming from the rear of that Peugeot. Dan staying out though to complete this lap. Coming around the final corner, Wolfie's into the pits. And uh, that's not where you want to be putting your car through the final corner. Dan doesn't improve. Seven tenths off his personal best. Kyle Love doesn't improve either. It's almost a second slower. That is personal best with a 46.3 compared to a 45.6. Ted, however, improves. Goes up into fifth place and closes the gap to ND in front with a 46.9. And the medium tie is in the Peugeot behind ND in his Nissan GTR, who is on an outlap on the medium tyres. Webzins has come around the final few corners in the Alfa Romeo. Also on the medium tyres. Let's see what he can do uh, up, up against these six Group B drivers. He uses the kerb on the left-hand side, up to the line. Goes up into third place, narrowly ahead of the scout. Done eight, uh, eight hundredths quicker than his fellow British driver. Three Brits in tonight's race. One of them is on provisional pole and will be looking to try and extend his advantage and uh, will probably be into the pits for a fresh set of super soft tyres. Yeah. Wolfie on an outlap in the Alfa Romeo. A very nice delivery designed by Ted, I believe. Uh, one minute it's purple on the rear and one minute it's blue uh, with a predominantly green front end. Really nice delivery from uh, Wolfie as well. Dan could be on a lap. There's nothing to say that he isn't. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see whether he comes into the pits or not. Uh, through the final few corners, I'm going to guess he's going to come into the pits. Looking at the time, he's already in the 1 minute 36. He's coming around this final corner and uh, is going to come into the pits. You kind of want to be in the 40s or 39s when the camera shot shows you going past the pit lane. That's probably a good rough estimate of where you want to be aiming for. Obviously they can't, well they can see it, but we have a better view of uh, knowing if they're going to improve by quite a bit or not. We'll just have to wait and see how it all pans out. Webson though is on a lap that's not as quick as his personal best through the middle sector. One and a half tenths down. Let's see if he can bind that time back though through the final couple of corners. A really tricky right left right chicane. Really easy to take the curbs wrong, lose the back end. And uh, really easy to make mistakes. And uh, speaking of mistakes, that is a 5 tenth penalty. Would have been a 46-6, uh, which isn't quicker than his fastest lap. Set on his fourth lap, uh, but it has to settle for a 47-1. Uh, obviously the 5 tenth penalty being an, uh, added. But yet uh, being annoyed at the ads. I've just had four ads in a row. So I've, just, I've just finished the fourth ad. Um, so I, it is frustrating when you get gifted with 120 seconds worth of adverts. That's literally a lap of Spain in these GT3 cars. Let's have a look at Wolfie though, who has just come out of the pit lane, uh, judging by his 2 minutes 16 and 144 minute lap uh, for a fresh set of the yellow striped medium tyres going through turn 9 now. A little bit wide on entry, runs a little bit wide on exit. Doesn't go on uh, own to the gravel though. Let's have a look at his uh, sector split through the middle sector. Gets a penalty and he isn't improving. He's two and two tenths down. Uh, the scout, uh, that's not the scout down. That's the scout down behind. Is on an outlap, however, so uh, we won't be improving. Wolfie's 
backed off of this that lap, uh, served his five tenth penalty, which he was given at turn nine, and uh, slows down to let down go through, and indeed he does. Kind of love behind on an out lap as well, going around the final few corners. Uh, he'll be preparing to start his flying lap. Uh, let's go on board though with your championship leader for an onboard lap here of the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya. And let's see if Wolfie can narrow, uh, close the gap to Kyla Love who is on provisional pole. Down the start, finish straight. Really important to get a good exit through the final corner before breaking at that black box on the left hand side. Going into turn one, taking a lot of curb on the inside before setting himself up for turn two and towards turn three. Little lift required, you want to kind of keep it nice and close to the curb on the inside. Uh, Wolfie choosing for a more central line through the track uh, before going into the entry of turn four using the curb on the left hand side braking as you go under the little the, the black thing that goes above the track um, the word will come to me but probably at the wrong moment in towards turn five though downhill braking zone before hooking up the curb on the inside using the curb on the outside as well to get on the power as early as you can Going into a uh, really tricky left-right chicane, actually one that's really easy to go a little bit too deep in and can cost you a lot of time momentum, as well as cutting the corner on the in and outside. Turn 9, turning in just as the curve fades away on the left-hand side, getting on the power as nice as early as you can before uh, building up the speed again, going down the back straights in towards turn 10, breaking before the 100-meter board at the black safety car box. Maybe turning in a little bit too early and getting on the power a little bit too early as well. Getting the back end stepped out on the exit of the corner. Left, right, uh, keeping it nice and tight on the inside. A little bit cautious on the throttle. Maybe could have got on the power a little bit early before braking for the final few corners. Not take, Deciding not to take uh, any curbs for the final few corners at that chicane. And actually decides to come into the pit uh, for a fresh set of tyres. Let's see what Kyla Love can do in those super softs around the final corner. Is it quicker? It is quicker, only by 200. But extends his gap out in front uh, ever so slightly with a 145.608. Webson's also into the pits to scout down. Picked up a time penalty on that lap with a 146.5. Could have been a good lap from Dan had he not got a 5 tenth penalty, I'm assuming. That's uh, what's happened there. I'm assuming that's why the, uh, the white P is next to the lap time on the right hand side Ted on an out lap after just coming into the pits and that's Melisandos backwards at the final chicane uh, let's have a quick see of exactly what happened and a really awkward crash it just it, it looks like he's turned in too early on the initial initial corner and then I don't know that, that just looked really awkward uh, who's on a lap I believe Dan could be on a lap I think Kylo could also be on a lap, however, just has set a uh, fast timed lap. Let's have an eye, let's keep an eye out on both though, as we uh, go through turn nine on board with the scout. Dan is improving through the middle sector. No, he's not. He's uh, a tenth and a quarter down on his personal best so far. Currently set on lap three, which is 146.3. As uh, he now has to negotiate third sector, trying to find the time lost through the middle sector. Only three minutes and 20 seconds left to go here in the qualifying session. We've had 15 minutes of the 18 minutes. We've now only got three of them left as uh, Dan makes his way through the final corner. Does he improve? It doesn't look like he's going to improve, he doesn't. He's six tenths down. What about Kyler Love up to the line? He doesn't improve either. He's with a 45-7. The pole time yesterday was a 40 Four, eight, I believe so nine tenths lower than the pole time that was set in the group A race the other day um, Webson's on an out lap there Ted though is starting a flying lap hooks up turn one quite nicely uh, taking the curb on the left hand side for turn two before uh, making the line as wide as possible for turn three to try and get a good good turning and a good entry hooking it up tight to the inside before using the curb on the left hand side he's four tenths up on his time through the first sector going into the towards turn four just drifting out wider slightly might cost him a, maybe a tenth and a half before breaking in towards turn of the downhill turn five 
You can see he's kind of running away from the apex there, taking a wider line. Will give him a good uh, good run. Maybe not the quickest line through that corner before get breaking in towards the tricky left right chicane. You can hear the tyres screaming at him as he's pushing the car so much through this middle sector. Breaking for the uphill right hander, mate, taking it a little bit cautiously is Ted. Maybe he's just trying to get in a good lap time that can promote him further up the grid rather than being in sixth place. He is six tenths up on his time though. It's good enough uh, to get ahead of the scout Dan for now if he uh, doesn't find any more time through this final sector. Breaking down into second gear, not using any throttle input before putting his foot flat, uh, flat on the accelerator. Taking a little bit of curve on the inside, braking as the curve starts on the right. Not taking any curb either through the uh, the first left hand. They're taking a little bit through the right. Doesn't look like he's in much control through the final corners. On uh, taking the curb, but it looks like quite a handful to drive. Does improve by eight tenths though, and just goes ahead of Webson's and just goes behind his teammate and championship uh, rival Wolfie 907. Who does appear to be on a quick lap though, going through the final corner. Uses a lot of the curb and astroturf on the outside. Does he improve? Yes, he does. Goes ahead at a tenth and a half ahead of his teammate Ted uh, with 46 flats and goes four hundredths behind ND in the Nissan GTI. And I said that car would be quick at the start of the stream, uh, especially at tracks like Spain. It has such a nice front hard, uh, right, good turning. Uh, does have little to no rear end grip. So if you like oversteery cars, uh, ND proving the uh, the lack of rear stability <laughs> through the penultimate corner, then the Nissan is the car for you. Uh, doesn't actually improve on his personal best, eight tenths off. Meanwhile, Kyla Love on a worn set of super soft tyres. It doesn't look like he's going to be improving. He's been on those tyres for four laps now. Uh, well, this will be his fourth lap. Uh, let's just have a look to see if he is improving. Now he's two and a half tenths off. Uh, it's uh, gonna be quite the, quite the job to make, that, make up that time. Uh, meanwhile, Melix Anders, who's having a tough time in the Mercedes, does find a second in his fastest lap. Uh, but it's not good enough to gain any extra track position. And uh, we'll start this race in seventh place. Uh, Kyle Love though going through the final chicane. Can he find the time lost through the first few sectors? And uh, wow, I'm getting on the curb and losing the rear like that. You would imagine uh, he wouldn't be improving. As the checkered flag has been waved. And it's going to be Kyle Love, who is on provisional pole position. Can anyone else beat him? Can the scout down? Jumpy, no, he can't. What about Ted MC? Doesn't improve in his first as left and will start fourth place minimum. Uh, who else is coming around the final few corners? Uh, one of the Websons, one of them's your championship leader, who's drifting through the final corner. I, it was hard to tell if that was intentional or not, uh, but Wolfie won't be improving. Let's just have another look to see if he pushes the handbrake. Yes, he does. <laughs> Uh, I think the handbrake was uh, fully engaged for your championship leader who is going to qualify in third place unless Webson's can have a say anything in his Alfa Romeo going up to the line doesn't improve in his time uh, but here is your starting grid then for today's race Kyla Love is actually wait, there is someone no sorry NB's coming around the final corner but it doesn't look like he's improving he's already in the 44s so it's going to be Kyla Love on pole position on the super soft tyres Followed by Endy, who's going to join him on the front row. Wolfie's going to start in third place alongside his teammate Ted, with Webson's in fifth place behind. And Sid, so the scout down, will start ahead of Menex Andils, who will start this race in seventh place. 31 laps here off the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. 16 corners uh, will the drivers have to negotiate before completing one lap. Main overtaking opportunities are turn one, turn four, and turn ten. Those are the top three places the drivers will be looking to overtake. We build though to the five, well, the two red lights here in Barcelona. The red lights are on, and it's a lights out, and away we go. And it's a slow start for Kyla. Quick one for Wolfie. Almost looked like he jumped in there. Webson's with an outstanding start. They're four wide going down the start finish rate. Webson's has already promoted himself up into the lead of the race, but they're four wide with the Mercedes, the Porsche, the Mazda in the middle of the track as well. Wolfie's going to try and send one down the outside of Webson's, who gets up into the lead of the race. ND and Carter Love going wheel to wheel through turn two and uh, two, one and two, sorry. ND, uh, Ted battling with the scout down behind them as well. Kyla Love has the inside line to Menex and Bills, who's going to try and hold it around the outside, but the Mercedes just has a little bit more grip through the middle of the corner 
and uh, will try to go down the inside of Mercedes. MD is going to try and get involved in this battle as well. Ted's dropped from fourth to seventh place, not the start he'd be hoping for, as he's trying to go down the inside of the scout down. He's trying to send one on MD. This is the view from Ted's POV. It's uh, getting quite carnage here at the back. MD loses the rear exit, compromises down the line slightly. Might try and send one down the inside, but isn't close enough to go for a move on ND. So it's been the dream start for Webson's and Wolfie. Webson's going up, what's that, four positions from the start of this race? We're starting in fifth place from the quali and is now up into the lead of the race. Further down the back of the grid, we've got ND and the scout Dan going wheel to wheel. Melexander's kind of in the middle of the track trying to defend his fourth position. Ted, Ted trying to go around the outside of the scout Dan. ND trying to make moves on Melexander's. They're still going to go wheel to wheel through turn 11 in towards turn 12. And that's a beautiful move from ND. The scout Dan trying to capitalize on that as well. Melexander's running wide into the gravel. That allows Ted to promote himself up into sixth place as well. Drifts through the right hander of turn 413 and uh, gets up though into sixth place. The scout down trying to go down the inside of the uh, ND, picking up his one second time penalty in the process around the final corner. These two are now going to have a drag race in towards turn one. Who has the fastest straight line speed? My think it should be the Nissan, who also has a little bit of slipstream, slipstream from the Mazda in front. Uh, still going wheel to wheel and towards turn one. 0.4 miles is the length of the, the run down towards turn one. Endy though with the inside line gets the move down up into fourth place but Dan's going to try the switch back move which will give him the outside line for turn three. Can he find the grip he needs to make this one stick round the outside? It could leave him vulnerable though to Ted behind. And uh, the scout down though is going to still can try and bite this one back late on the brakes to the inside. Can he make this one stick? Forces ND wide. Looks like he's got the move down up into fourth place. Uh, Ted's now going to try this, but try and bite this one to the inside of Nissan, but isn't close enough to get the move down. Meanwhile, out in front, Wolfie's got ahead of Webson's for the lead of the race. Five tenths now between those two drivers. Kind of love on the soft, uh, super soft tyres. Just falling back slightly from the top two. Uh, meanwhile, the battle that has been ensuing on behind for fourth place has cost him time to the top three the gap now 2.4 seconds as Kyler Love's going to go for a move on uh, Webson's who must have made a mistake through turn nine because he's lost a lot of time to Wolfie around the outside goes Kyler Love and that's a beautiful move from the British driver in the Mazda and uh, promotes himself up into second place Ted getting ahead of ND gets up into fifth place down at turn 10 and uh, let's just have a look to see exactly how we done it down the back straight down defending from ND. I'm going to guess ND had an oversteer moment. I don't know, it just goes a bit too deep in towards turn 10, and that promotes uh, Ted up into fifth place. Uh, meanwhile, the battle out in front for second place ensues between Carla and Webson's. You'd assume Webson's won't have the tyre advantage, being on the medium tyres, and Carla being on the quicker super soft tyres. Uh, but Ted, though, on a recovery drive from the back of the grid, is going down the inside of Dan in towards turn one. Uh, covers the switchback move and gets up into fourth place ahead of the British driver, two Peugeots. Uh, the only two Peugeots on the grid battling out on track for fourth place at the minute. Looking back out in top, it looks like kyle has got a little bit of gap to Webson. So he's closed down slightly to Wolfie. The gap was 1.5, now about one second after their battle a few corners ago. Uh, Ted looking to go defensive in towards turn five uh, before pulling back over onto the racing line. Has gone a little bit deep. That's allowed Dan to try and maybe go for a move in towards turn five. Ted now under pressure from Dan. He got his first podium back in group two in Sardinia Road Track A. Uh, the backwards configuration is Dan going to go for one in towards turn nine. Almost looked like was going to send one to him to serve a small chunk of his penalty in the meantime. ND looking to, uh, quite feisty behind as well. Uh, isn't close enough though to go for a move. Uh, but it's been a good start to this race. Lots of action, lots of overtakes, which is exactly what we love to see. Uh, but that gap though has come down quite significantly. Kyle Love is putting the charge back on on those super soft tyres you'd think he'd be quicker being on a, a compound of tyre well two compounds of tyre quicker than your current race leader uh, meanwhile Ted is having to defend from the scout down he's going to have the slipstream you can see he's tucking in behind going down the start finish straight it's a long run towards turn one perfect opportunity 
try and go for a move. Is, where is he going to go? Is he going to go left or right? Uh, decides to stick behind for now. Give Ted a little bit of a nudge before they break in towards the first corner. Already we're on lap 4 of 31. We've still got 28 laps left to go. And we've got a battle for the lead that's roaring on uh, between the Japanese and Italian car manufacturers, Alfa Romeo versus Mazda. Ireland versus Britain in terms of the drivers here tonight out on track fighting for the lead of the race. On board with Kyla Love. You just see the car just looks so planted on those uh, super soft tyres going through the chicane. Uh, flashing his lights going through turn nine. And let's just have a quick look down the rest of the field. Dan's actually got ahead of Ted. I wonder if we can go back and see how he done it. I'm not sure whether Ted made a mistake. Replay cameras won't go that far back. Here goes ND trying to look for a move around the outside of Ted. Uh, wasn't enough room on the outside, almost getting onto the grass and uh, losing the rear whilst braking. Not ideal. To see that Peugeot doesn't seem to like that the uh, the right hander of turn 13 seems to get a little bit out of shape. Meanwhile, back out in front, uh, Kyla Love is closing that gap down with the aid of Slipstream down the start finish straight. Is he going to go for a move in towards turn one? He was looking for it, wasn't quite close enough though to go for a move. Meanwhile. Uh, the battle for fifth place now. Ted's just dropped off to the back of the scout, Dan. Two Peugeot drivers, and at the minute, Dan appears to be the quicker one out of the two. Uh, but we're only on that five out of 31, and uh, things can still uh, change quickly. Let's get the, the data back out on the screen. Showing the tyres, the fuel, and the throttle and brake inputs. Uh, the battle out in front, though, is going on, and we've got yellow flags, and that's Webson's off at turn four what happened to him in the Alfa Romeo uh, let's have a look so he's got onto the curb he's gone deep has he gone deep he's gone deep and uh, has gone off into the gravel and is facing the wrong way and unfortunately will drop down to last place hopefully he can uh, find his groove and his confidence once again and uh, try and challenge back up through the field Ted is still under pressure from ND in his Nissan GTR going in towards turn 10. ND decides to back out and uh, break a little bit early for that one. Color Love is still putting the pressure on Wolfie, but you'd imagine. He should be getting past at this rate on the super soft tyres. Maybe being affected by the dirty air through the middle and final sector. He's in the slipstream now and he's going to be gaining all the time on the Alfa Romeo, which does lack uh, straight line speed to co compared to the average car. Kyle Love is going to send one down the inside. He's late on the brakes. Can he make it stick? And you bet he can. The latest of the late breakers gets the move down in towards the lead of the race. Now he needs to pull away before he pits onto the softs or the medium tyres. Wolfie though will be trying his best to continue to put him under pressure, maybe force him into making a mistake whilst he's on the faster compound of tyres. But these two have pulled out a 5.6, 5.7 second gap to Dan and Ted ND as well behind Manic Sander was just dropping three and a half seconds behind ND and opting for an interesting tactic on the exit of turn five getting all out of shape throwing the rear out uh, we can just have another look of that one let's change the camera and uh, you can just see they're getting on the astroturf and uh, he's a lucky boy not to end up in the gravel or the barrier the front two though Morphe almost pushing Kyla through turn 12. So we're about to finish lap 6 of 31. The front two 
separated by five tenths of a second in this race. It's Alfa Romeo versus Mazda for the lead of the race. Wolfie has got a, such a good run through the final corner. He's gaining a lot on the exit. Now going down the start finish straight, he's tucking in close behind in the slip thing kind of defends the inside line but Wolfie's going to find the gap and was going over into the pit lane as they now go wheel to wheel in towards turn one Wolfie on the inside late on the brakes gets the move done might have gone a little bit too deep though you hear Skyler Love fighting back with the alternative line trying to find it round the outside he is going to get a more acceleration more drive taking the wider line going in towards turn four he's going to send one down the inside no he's not he's going to break slightly earlier and serve a little bit of his time penalty Wolfie's gone a little bit wide though here goes Kyler he's going to try and capitalize on that mistake he's going to send one to the inside can he make this move stick there's still wheel to wheel Wolfie on the outside Kyler with a beautiful late move to the inside going in towards turn seven now can you make this one stick? Wolfie, though, is later on the brakes with the outside line. Maintains first, pl uh, first place for now. What a battle. These fronts who are happening, uh, having, sorry. These guys as well behind Ted and Endia catching up to the scout, Dan. Now 1.1 seconds between those guys. Dan running in a, uh, a wonderful third place for his individual championship fight. And we'll be looking to try and secure another podium in this the, the league. As the first one came in Sardinia, and uh, let me just quickly check. He has got two podiums this season. Uh, one of them came in Sardinia. The other one in Interlagos. And we'll be looking to try and make it a third here in Spain. Uh, but will be under pressure from Ted and ND in the next couple of laps having said that Ted has lost a little bit of time and has made a mistake through the final corner because here comes ND he's going to pull up alongside the Irish driver that's Melix Andals running wide into the final corner going onto the gravel but now Nissan versus Peugeot going into turn one Ted's later on the brakes will have the outside line but ND getting the move done down the inside Ted's going to try something though on the exit of turn two ND getting a little bit out of shape on the exit of turn two going in towards turn three that could allow Ted to get better acceleration uh, but nothing Ted can do we'll have to settle in for fifth place for now we could be struggling in the Peugeot on those medium tyres we'll have to see what his pace is like later on on the soft compounder tyres uh, speaking of Kyler could be struggling on those super softs I think it's probably, probably time to come into the pits from those super soft tyres and put on a fresh set of either mediums or softs. I would hazard a guess to say it's going to go on through the medium tyres, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, probably lap 13, 14 is probably the pit stop for the medium runners. Take the softs about 10 laps and we'll be final uh, the rest of the laps, the rest of the race on the super softs depending on what you feel like the faster of the two softest compounds is uh, Wolf is showing that his mediums at this rate are quicker than Kyler's super softs we've seen the pace that Wolf has had all season no one's been able to challenge him he's won I think every race of the season apart from Brands Hatch and Fuji uh, Wolf uh, no Woody won in Fuji and I believe it was Tobster who won in Brands Hatch, Kyler Love is in through the pits. Uh, it's almost like I would know. It's just that just goes to show my level of intelligence and genius, as a uh, famous Jeremy Clarkson might have said. Uh, Webson's though has already made a pit stop, I believe. Uh, he made a mistake a few laps ago. Uh, he's actually done a two minute two on lap seven, so maybe another mistake from Webson's. Um, he's nine seconds behind Menex Andals. Will come out ahead of Kyler Love. Uh, not sure what's happened. Not sure what's happened. Uh, what's what's going on there? But uh, ND narrowly ahead of Ted. Eight tenths of a second between the two. We'll be trying to extend that gap and make his uh, pull out of the slipstream range. It's going to be interesting to see how that Nissan fares next week in Tokyo Expressway when the, the grip levels 
are going to be significantly lower than the grip offered on offer here at Spain as it's going to be raining and it'll be the intermediates and the wet tyres so, uh, that these drivers will be selecting for that one the second wet race of the season uh, the first time we've implemented a wet race and uh, that is not ideally how we want to take the exit of turn 10 Ted getting all the sorts of out of shape on exit going a little bit too deep and then putting the power down a little bit too early on the kerb and uh, it's causing the back end to step out um, that's costing quite a bit of time 2.3 seconds is now the gap between him and ND might actually be in to the pit slightly earlier off of the medium tyres to go on to a set of softs uh, the young cart was quite powerful in yesterday's race uh, the undercut is quite powerful at most tracks to be perfectly honest apart from i would say maybe monza where slipstream is the most important thing in that race wolfie though has a 7.7 .7 second advantage over the scout down currently running in second place as that uh, kyle love is in and out of the pits onto the medium tyres uh, which means he'll be onto a set of softs for his final stint Wolfie continues to push continues to extend that gap out in front that gap just getting bigger and bigger through every corner down now eight seconds behind uh, but eight tenths ahead of ND in the Nissan Nissan versus Peugeot uh, not sure the last time we've heard two car manufacturers fighting uh, those two car manufacturers passing the way sorry let's have a look further down the rest of the field kind of love it's 3.3 seconds behind Webson's our closest battle on track is the second place and that, that gap now just getting up we're going up slightly to 1.1 seconds it looks like the a nissan is struggling slightly in the final sector uh, despite having uh, well it hasn't got much rear rear end grip which is could which could be why uh, nd is losing his time through that sector uh, low speed corners i'd say is where the nissan really struggles medium speed probably the better the, the, the high points of the, the the Nissan corners like turn one three four those types of medium speed corners I wouldn't obviously it's uh, medium speed and low, low speed corners are quite similar in group three high speed corners obviously being on like 130R you've got Kerber Grande but uh, Spain consisting of a lot of medium and low speed corners Uh, the turn in on the Nissan definitely helps uh, but uh, there is a prime example of where it doesn't help uh, the, the lack of rear end grip and the vast amounts of oversteer that the car gets on exit really important we have patience on the car throttle Kyle Love has set the fastest lap of the race at this moment in time with 45.9 is on the medium tyres at the minute is that the first and only driver to come into the pits has Websons and Manny Sandals just in front of him who will probably be into the pits in the next two, two to five laps I'd imagine those guys have been to the pits. That gap out in front is actually coming down. Looks like Wolfie's made a mistake because uh, that, well, it, it could be a mistake. It could be the tyre wear because uh, the scout down was quicker on the past two laps. You can see they're down with a 48.6, 48.8 for Wolfie out in front. Maybe the Alfa Romeo isn't as good on its tyres as the Peugeot. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see maybe down finding a little bit of pace uh, some consistency on those mediums meanwhile 
Webston's almost rear-ending the back of Melek Sanders going into turn one, a little bit ambitious on the brakes. I can hear the tyres screaming going through turn three. And those, that is a lot of tyres screeching through turn three. The grip is starting to fall off the cliff slightly on those medium tyres on the Alfa Romeo. The rear of though being uh, flushed quite brightly by Kyla Love on this fresh set of medium tyres in the Mazda RX Vision concept car. Is it Vision GT or is this, what is the Vision GT3? Sorry. Um, I've just been saying Mazda RX Vision, but Mazda RX Vision GT3 does sound uh, a lot better. Uh, Robson sliding slightly through the middle sector. Not as much as Melex Anders though, who's got suffering quite badly for a front end grip with those front tyres just falling off the cliff. Here goes Kyler Love though, looking for a move on Webson's Melex Anders parks his car in the middle of the track, kind of blocks Kyler from completing the move around the outside, going in towards turn 10, serving some of his tyre penalty in the process. Uh, meanwhile, behind Webson's and Kyler going wheel to wheel, Kyler though gets the edge and promotes himself up into sixth place. He'll be trying to get past Melex Anders. Is he going to try it in towards turn 13? It's not close enough though to make the move done. Is he going to go into turn 14? It's getting a bit congested here in the final sector between these three drivers. And it uh, looks like Melex Sanders is... I thought he was going, coming into the pits there. Webster's is into the pits. We'll be trying to undercut. Kyle Love, though, does get the move done up into fifth place. Webster's second driver into the pits. We're trying to undercut Melex Sanders. Currently running in sixth place. Andy's now a second... 1.2 behind the scout dad who's about 8.3 seconds behind the race and championship leader who just seems to be extending that gap slightly now uh, with four tenths quicker on the last lap might just be starting to push through the 30 uh, the first third of this race uh, we're just oh, actually we're over a third of the way through the race. We're about I don't know 37, 38 percent of the way done. Uh, we've only got uh, 19 laps to go here in Spain. The first race of Group Three. Uh, hello and welcome to everyone who is watching. Is Wolfie going to come into the pits? I'm going to guess yes. Yes, he does. Decides to come into the pit, so your race leader into the pit. I imagine Dan and Andy are going to follow him in. Uh, Dan does. What about Andy? Andy actually decides to stay out an extra lap. Bold decision from the Irish driver. And the Nissan will be promoted up, though, into the lead of the race. Ted follows his teammate and Dan into the pits from the medium tyres. And, uh, well, look, look at that. It looks like Wolfie's burnt a lot more of his fuel compared to the cars around him. That Peugeot likes to sip the fuel compared to the Alfa Romeo for that fresh set of tyres going into the car what tyre tyres though is it going to be for the race leader we'll have to wait and see you can see on the left hand side on the leaderboard it uh, changes to the purple super soft it's going to be interesting to see what Ted goes on to is he going to follow the same obviously he won't be able to change his tyres now his tyres are already on the car Dan has gone for the red soft Wolfie for the purple super soft. What about Ted? It's the red soft compound of tyres. Ted following the same strategy as Dan. Uh, Wolfie for trying something different here, similarly to what Dutchie was doing yesterday, and has come up behind Kyla Love. Kyla Love's got the jump on Wolfie, but uh, the tables have turned. It's now Kyla Love on the mediums and Wolfie on the super soft tyres, meaning both drivers will be on the soft tyres at the end of the race this is why this strategy that i've implemented for this season just makes it so much better so much more intense when they try, try something different because in the first in it was kyla's job to get the jump on wolfie while he was in the super sauce this time around the tables have turned and it's wolfie's time to try and get the jump of kyla while he is on the super soft and kyla's on the mediums and it's already could be happening now who goes Kyla almost goes defensive to the inside. Wolfie, look for the outside. It's going to go to the inside. Isn't close enough, though, to send one to the inside. T ends up backing out of that move. But those super soft tyres are going to have a lot more grip. Kyla's got into the curve and has careered into the side of Wolfie. He's going to try and hold this now around the outside at turn 12. Can he make this one stick in towards turn 
no sorry turn 14 that was turn 13 this is turn 14 no that was turn 12 because this is wow I'm so confused this is turn this is turn 16 around the final corner and Wolfie's got the move done up into the lead of the race we can see how far the replay Kuchi goes back but it doesn't go quite far that back so we'll see the move happen again now Kyle needs to stick with Wolfie otherwise you fear that he's just going to pull away with this one uh the gap already opening up to eight tenths of a second and he's into the pit where's he going to come out his car's invisible uh no it's not he's coming into the pits now no it's not he's, he's coming out of the pits well that was really weird and he's come out 2.6 seconds behind down the overcut really hasn't worked there i wonder if the replay features will just show it well, they're working on an invisible car here, ladies and gentlemen. Indy's into the pits. They're spraying fuel all over the ground. Uh, the mechanics looking at the fork are so confused as to what's going on. Uh, but we can cut back to the live action. Wolfie's pulled out a 1.4 second, but I love this game. Um, some, some of the glitches that can occur in racing games, they're quite funny. Uh, often, I think, the best glitches. But, um, yeah, just a slight visual glitch on the spectator tab. Uh, Webson, though, is actually going purple has set the fastest lap of the race a 145.4 goes purple through the first sector if he can keep up keep up the lap and keep it by the end of the race and he'll get an extra points however i think his party might be ending in the next 30 seconds as wolfie is going five tenths purple through the middle sector on those super soft tires he is flying through the second half of this race we're just at the halfway stage halfway through lap 15 of 31 and that gap has already been extended to three seconds 3.1 3.2 and in a minute it'll be 3.3 3.4 they're almost going up a tenth per second it is going up a tenth per second 4.5 but 3.6 in a second 3.7 3 2 1 3.8 absolutely amazing pace from wolfie he is on the super softs compared to kyla's mediums this is what you would expect though from the two different tyre compounds sets the fastest lap of the race as well the 144.8 on the fresher tyres and he's going to be trying to close down that 2.4 second gap that he has to the scout down in front he actually has, let's actually have an onboard lap on board of ND in his Nissan goes a ride onto the astral turf of turn two that's going to compromise his line towards turn three meaning he has to opt for the wider line that might cost him maybe a tenth or so uh, using all the track on the left hand side breaking at the gt sports side it's two and a half tenths purple through the first sector you can see the rear range just overtaking the front so he gets a snap of oversteer through turn four that's the turning of the nissan for you before going towards turn five hooks it up nicely uses all the curb and the extra turf available on the outside and the exit of the corner a really easy place to invalidate and go too deep but Andy's able to hook it up nicely using the maximum amount of curb on both the in and outside of the little chicane uh, before negotiating turn nine cleanly using all the curb on the left hand side down the back straight building up the, uh, the speed before breaking just before the 100 meter board is still purple but not a lot he's uh, lost a little bit of time gets a snap of oversteer on the exit of turn 10 and towards 11 and 12 keeping nice and tight to the curb on the inside a little bit of understeer before getting onto the power as soon as possible breaking up those black tyre marks on the curb on the left side of the track not using any of the curb on the inside for the left part but using as much as you can for the right and turn 15 and towards turn 16 using up the curb available on the left hand side does he beat more his fastest lap no he doesn't he's two tenths off but does set his personal best by two seconds with a 45 flat and has actually closed down that gap to the scout dam quite significantly now 1.8 seconds separate those two not as much though as the gap out in front for the lead of this race one uh, 7.1 seconds uh it's coming down slightly but we'll be going back up as soon as we get to the more technical grippier parts of the track aka the corners where the super softs are going to be working a lot better than the warner mediums on kyla loves Scout down running a good race in third place as things stand. He'll be looking to try and get his third podium of the season. Has never got a podium, uh, well, has never got two podiums in the same car class at this rate. He's got one in group two, one in group four, and will be looking to get his first in group three. But we'll have to keep this pace and consistency up 
So he's got a rapidly closing ND behind him, who's on the red super, uh, who's on the red soft tyre, sorry, Ted, also on the red soft tyre, four tenths, uh, four seconds, sorry, behind those two, 15, 16 seconds behind the race leader, his teammate, but more importantly, his championship rival. Let's check the standings as things stand. Uh, let's actually, can Wolfie win the championship here tonight? So, Wolfie is on 292 points, Ted is on 195. So the gap at the minute as things stand. Oops, sorry, bear with me. Because uh, we've got a fight on our hand for second place. Kyla Love defending the inside to the Scott Dan. But Kyla must have made a mistake somewhere. Because Dan's closed that up, that gap up so much on the last lap. Could be that or the medium tires are going off. Here we go then to the outside of turn three. A little bit of contact between the two drivers. Dan, can he try and make this one stick around the outside of turn three? He's going to try the switch back in towards the inside of turn four. Uh, has he got is he in far enough alongside he sends one down the inside uh can kyla fight this one back on the inside but those medium tires just haven't got the grip to fight back against the peugeot and now he's going to be under pressure from nd behind he's been able to close down that gap to the scout dan well those two have been battling uh but kyla in the middle of these two is going to allow dan to pull away from nd Endy needs to get ahead as quick as he can. Kyla runs, runs wide into the gravel, gets oversteer on the exit, uh, has to defend the inside line. You can see how much time they're losing to Dan. He's drifting through turn nine. That uh, gives ND the run in towards turn 10. But who's going to be latest on the brakes? Kyla's going to try and hold this one down the inside. Can ND try and work it around the outside on those soft compound tyres? They're still going to go wheel to wheel on the exit in towards turn 11. Can ND find a way past? He's now losing lots of time to the scout Dan is funny just can't find a way through against the Mazda but he's going to go down the inside Kyle is onto the gravel he's drifting through turn 4 to 13 but he's got the move done and up into fourth place goes a little bit too deep into turn 15 has to cut the corner and uh, that'll be another one second time penalty uh, give it a few seconds and uh, actually Kyle has got away with that one surprisingly the game not warranting any time penalties but that gap now 1.5 seconds is the gap between Dan and ND and he's going to have to try it get, try again to close down the gap to the British driver but going back to the championship 95 no 97 points sorry separating the two which means actually let me just let me just double check this I think it can be won tonight. So if, if Wolfie wins this, if Wolfie wins this race with the fastest lap, he will be on 323 points. With four races to go, the maximum amount of points on offer is 30, 31 times four, which is 124. Ladies and gentlemen, the race can be won tonight. If Wolfie wins this race with the fastest lap, Ted will need to score. Sorry, let me work. I need. I need to work this one out. I don't want to mess this one up. So if you do a 323. That's how many points Wolfie's going to have if he wins this race with the fastest lap. He needs 124... No, he needs a 125 point... No, an 124 point gap to Ted behind if he's to win the championship today. So if you do that minus 124, that's 199. So if Ted scores less than four points... No, four points or less, Wolfie will win the championship. Uh, that means he has to leave this race, be disqualified, or disconnect. 
Those are the only three options for Dwarfy to win it four races early. I've done the maths. And that is uh, the... I hope you guys enjoy me trying to work that one out, but... Can't be one tonight. On to the constructors, however. Uh, forget me not racing consisting of Wolfie and Head. They're on 585 points. Uh, behind are Melix and Dills and MD on 267 points. And if you do the quick maths, 500 and 585 minus 267 is 318. I think Forget Me Not Racing are going to win the Constructors' Championship here tonight. I'm just going to check to see if that's accurate. So maximum points on offer as a team is 31 plus 24 because that's the win of the race, second place and the fastest lap. That is 55. If you times that by five, uh, four, sorry, is 220, which means the gap can no longer be closed in and we will announce it at the end. But Wolfie and Head have won the Constructors' Championship. The gap needs to be less than uh, more than 220. It is way over 220. Congratulations to those two. They have won the Constructors' here tonight. I'm going to double check that at the end of the stream. So don't get too hyped up. But if someone in the chat could do the maths as well for me, um, that would be wonderful. Meanwhile, back to the racing. Kyla loves into the pits from the mediums. He'll be taking the softs to the end. There you have it. The red striped soft tyres. We're going to the end on the end of lap 21. Dan, though, is running in a brilliant second place as Sting Stan, but is under a lot of pressure from NV and his Nissan behind. Uh, picks up a 5 tenth penalty as well, goes defensive to the inside. I wonder if he's going to try and undercut ND behind, because it's, it's Dan who's making the calls here. If he pits, ND is likely to pit, but if he doesn't pit, that leaves him vulnerable to the undercut attempt. Wolfie, though, is into the pits. I'm sure he'll uh, have a look on that and see what options he has available. He's on the soft compound tyres, though, so he might stay out. He does stay out. MD, though, is going to follow him and stay out on track. What about Ted? Is he going to stay out on the soft? I'd imagine he will. Uh, yes, he does. He stays out, but the top three drivers will then be going on to the super soft tyres to try and close down this man, Wolfie 907. It's going to take a mistake if you're to catch this guy in a race. As he uh, puts in the fuel needed to go to the end. But uh, that promotes the scout down up into the lead of this race. It's been a while. I don't know if I've ever said that at all. Uh, but if you're just tuning in, uh, they haven't made their pit stops. But are leading this race. They will need to complete this lap if they are to go down in the history books as leading laps. Halfway through lap 22 of 31. We've been racing for 39 minutes and 20 seconds, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. That's how long the race has been going on for since lap one. The gap out in front, separated by less than one second, nine tenths between your race leader and second place, uh, ND. Thank you to everyone who is still watching as uh, we draw nearer to the end of the first race in group three round number 11 of 15 it's so good that it, ate, that it even rhymed you know what i'm actually quite proud of that the end of the first of group three round 50 yes that, that, I, I that's one of those small things in life that you just feel a little bit happy about but the undercut has been made but i'm not sure how much of an undercut it's gonna be having a look having looked at the fuel situation between the Nissan and the Peugeot. ND and Ted both into the pits. ND doesn't have a lot of fuel left, which is probably why he had to make the call slightly earlier than he might have imagined. Ted, though, follows him in. Dan has to stay out and has led laps here in Spain. 
but uh, he's going to be able to put in less fuel for this pit stop that he will be making probably at the end of this lap. It's going to be interesting to see where he comes out in respects to ND. Are the fresher set of tyres going to be enough to compensate for the more fuel that he is putting in the car? 63 litres for ND. What about Ted? 58. Ted underfueled in the Nurburgring. Hopefully he hasn't underfueled here tonight in Spain. Uh, but that gap out in front is coming down from 24 to 23 seconds. What's the gap between ND and Dan? It's 36.4, 36.3, 36.2. That gap is coming down at a rapid rate of knots. The fresh set of tyres are coming into play. Spain is such a technical track that the fresh tyres of the other car are just so powerful. You can get away with it with tracks like... Uh, tracks like Silverstone, tracks like Monza, tracks like, um, what a powerful tracks, um, 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 I'm trying to think of tracks that have predominantly straights. It's all coming to my head at the minute, but that gap is coming down so quickly the scout down there is into the pits from the soft compound tyres, meaning more people will retake the lead of the race. But Darren will be able to put in only 30 litres of fuel, whereas uh, ND had to put in 50, going from 10 to 68 or 63, whatever it was. Going through the turn 12, right hand, they're going now into the final sector. Dan is into the pits, where's he going to come out? This is the, fat, uh, the battle for second place on the racetrack. And he does have a two tenths penalty, which we need to serve at the final, uh, before the final lap. Where is Dan? He's in the pits. He's being let out of the pits now, riding on board with ND. You can see there's Dan coming out of the pits. Has he got the gap? Has he got the margin? And uh, the fuel saving from Dan, or either that or the Peugeot just wasn't burning its fuel, which is not a bad thing, obviously. But Dan has got the overcut covered, comes out ahead of ND, despite how quickly that gap was coming down. Uh, Webson's comes out in uh, sixth place and it's 11 seconds behind Kyla Love running in fifth place two seconds behind Ted who's four seconds behind ND and uh, the race is coming to an end at a rapid rate of knots here with only seven laps to go Tan ND close down the gap to the scout Dan this would be a great result for both drivers if they can finish on the podium They've got to keep it clean and consistent though, because they have Ted who is closing in on their tails. And uh, it's not this lap, but it's going to be the next lap that matters most, because this is when the fastest laps of the race might be coming into play. Wolfie though is five tenths off of his personal best. The fastest lap set on lap 15 with a 44.8 was the fastest lap of the race. Envy on those fresh super soft tyres. What can he say about the fastest lap? Is he going purple? Not quite. He's two tenths off his personal best. He needs to find four tenths through the final sector if he's to take an extra point for fastest lap on this lap however he does have the scout dagger and Ted behind on a fresh set of the super softs who might be going quicker Ted picks up a 4 tenth penalty for running wide on the exit to turn 10 Wolfie though starts lap 25 of 31 let's get an on board lap of the scout Dan running in second place looking behind going through the final corner you can see the rapid MD gaining on the Nissan GTR, but let's not focus on that in the meantime. Down the start finish straight, the longest straight here in Barcelona before breaking for turn one at that black box, first black box on the left hand side, following the tyre marks that lead turn one, taking the curve on both the insides of each corner. Down losing a little bit of time there to ND behind, hooking it up tight to the inside curb on the right hand side while getting on the power as soon as possible opening up the uh, opening up the steering for breaking up the GT Sport sign going towards turn four using the middle of the track getting on the power nice and early it's cost him a little bit of time to ND behind maybe half a tenth hooking, uh, hooking up the apex nicely on the inside not using as much curb on the outside as a lot of drivers have been tonight really tricky should catch the chicane as I've been saying all race goes a little bit too deep into the first one that might be a time penalty of five tenths we'll have to wait and see going through turn nine doesn't turn in too early or too late there is the five tenth penalty looking behind you can see Eddie's a lot closer now to when uh, Dan started this lap 
breaking just before the 100 meter board. He's small tenths of his personal best. He's serving four tenths of his time penalty in the process as well. Going in towards turn 11, takes all the curb on the inside for swinging, swinging it back right in towards turn, uh, third of the turn 12. Turn 13, doesn't go over that sausage curb. Important not to go over the red sausage curb. Doesn't, no one seems to be using that inside curb for turn 14. Using the curb on the inside for turn 15. For going onto the curb a little bit on the final corner. That lost him a little bit of time, maybe half a tenth of a second. Uh, he had to lift there because he was losing the rear. And now ND is less than a second behind and uh, the scout down as we start lap 26 of 31. Wolfie's gap out in front is still 11.6 seconds. He's absolutely on fire here tonight and will be set to uh, gain some crucial points in his hope to win the championship. Not long to go before the end of this race. The first one in Group 3. And uh, it has been a good race. We are currently watching the battle for second place between ND and the Scout Dan. It would be great for both drivers if they could finish on the podium Oh, sorry, give me two seconds. Apologies about the silence. Just having to take, uh, rehydrate myself. It's actually Dan is purple through the first sector. Dan is finding some pace out of nowhere on those super soft tyres. He does have low fuel as well to aid him. What about, what's the gap looking like to Ted? Ted's closing the gap. Uh, but it's not quite enough to gain in on the top three. Will he be able to finish on the podium? We'll have to wait and see. ND, though, is keeping that gap fairly consistent. Uh, has found a, little, a lot of time, though, through the left-right chicane, turn seven and eight. Gap now nine-tenths between these two drivers, and that's Ted running wide through turn nine. Uh, I believe he was purple, judging by purple indication. Here is a... Just a reminder of how he lost that time. Meanwhile, looking back up to the scout down, he's got ND only seven tenths behind him into the closing stages of this race. Who is going to claim second place? Is it going to be ND or the scout down? Which car will come out on top? Will it be the Nissan or will it be the Peugeot? Two cars that we've rarely seen, only seen once before in the league. It was Tim who drove the Nissan. It was Finn who drove the, uh, the Peugeot a few seasons ago now these two are fighting away on track with three laps to go Wolfie does have his 11.7 second lead which has kind of been fairly fairly maintained I think is a, the best word to use it's kind of been that gap for the entirety of the stint he hasn't really pulled away or uh, dropped off the top two Ted though is now four seconds behind ND and Dan his chances of getting a podium is starting to fall away ND though is purple now through the first sector he's I think he was in the slipstream of Dan uh, but has lost a little bit of time through turn three but that gap is coming down through the technical part of turn four and turn five he's 
using the front end grip of that Nissan to his advantage. Going into the corner, you can see he's pushing so much. Quality lap after quality lap on these soft compound tyres, which are in much worse conditions than the Scout Dan's. His tyres just seem so much better in that Peugeot than the Nissan. Gets it all out of shape on exit. A snap of oversteer was lucky not to be off, off into the barrier. And that has cost him a little bit of time going in towards turn 10. The gap out in front though is starting to come down slightly, uh, but it shouldn't be nothing too concerning. It's still 11 seconds uh, now has been dropped into the tens, uh, but it has still been a commanding race from your championship leader as uh, they drive his start lap 29. Ted is closing that gap down rapidly to ND. I think he might have made a mistake there. You can see his lap time was two seconds slower than his previous one. Uh, his personal best, sorry. And uh, he's dropped now 1.5 seconds behind Dan. Three seconds now ahead of Ted. I'm not sure what's gone on there. Meanwhile, Webson's is closing on the back of Kyler Love. He goes a little bit wide through the final exit in the final corner. But he's still gaining time down the straight. He's the Alpha uh, Mazda seems to be struggling in the straight line speed compared to the Alfa Romeo in the slip team. He's going to pull over to the right hand side of the screen. He's going to be late on the brakes. Can he drive this one round the outside of Kyler Love? He can't quite. He has to go off onto the curb. I think there was contact between the two on exit. Can he try and make this one stick around the outside of the British driver? They're still going to go wheel to wheel. Uh, Webson so runs out of room, has to tuck back in behind. Just for now though, and we'll keep sixth place. Is he going to send one? down the inside and towards turn four the door was left open but was uh, slammed tightly shut Webson's tucks back in behind the Mazda uh, but for how much longer can Kyla Love keep him behind those soft tyres starting to go off compared to the fresher super soft which are going to have more grip and there's contact between the two uh, Webson's giving Kyla a little bit of a nudge you can just see how much more cornering speed he has compared to the Mazda he's lighting up the, his rear end, just, you can see the headlights illuminating the rear of that master. It's 5.30 in the morning here in Spain. Purple sky luring over the track and uh, pro providing us with a nice scenery here tonight. Webson, though, is so close to getting this move done on Kyler Love. The battle for fifth place on lap 29. Is he going to go down the inside and towards turn 13? He's late on the brakes. Kyler turns in too early and hits the side of Webson's who gets the move down up into uh, P5 car number 54 we're trying to hunt down Ted in P4 but the gap at 17 seconds it's going to be unlikely that car number 24 uh, is going to lose his fourth place the scout Dow has now pulled out a two second advantage to Dan behind ND behind, Ted runs wide through turn three. Kyla can't fight this one back on Webson's down the straight in towards turn one. We'll try something through turn three, but you can see how much time he's losing through the high speed corner. He's actually gained a little bit of time halfway through the corner. This battle might not be over on the penultimate lap of this race. We'll have to wait and see how it unfolds, but I'd uh, have to say Webson's does have the upper hand in terms of the tyre advantage. back up to the race leader Wolfie 907 that gap is coming down to the scout down behind but it's not coming down enough for Dan to win this race Wolfie coming around the final few corners to start the final lap here in Spain the first race of group three in the final five races of the season here goes Wolfie he starts the final lap serving his time penalty in order to try and make his championship hopes even closer than it needs to be. I, that, that didn't make sense. I tried saying two things at once. I was trying to say he can win it earlier, um, but also trying to say he is more is. Uh, uh, let's move on. Um, his championship rival Ted down in fourth place at the minute. This is big points gained in the drivers' championship. Wolfie can't win it here tonight. Ted will have to disconnect. Uh, on this last lap if he's to win the championship 
but if he does keep the fastest lap, he will move on to 323 points. Uh, that gap, though, is 6.7 seconds behind to Dan. Never say never. Something drastic could happen. Webster has opened up the gap to Kyla Love in fifth and sixth place, respectively. But it's been this man who has been the front on the front page of the newspaper in the fr uh, on the front of the grid. He's leading the championship. He's won every race apart from two. Tops the one in Brands Hatch. Woody won in Fuji. But uh, it's been Wolfie 907 who has won every other race this season. He's not been unbeaten in a group in a. Um, a, cl a, car, a class of car he's lost one in group two lost one in group four but every other race he's been on the top step of the podium it's been a dominant race from him from third place on the grid rounds the final corner for the final time and wolfie 907 not only wins the race but for the team wins the constructors championship him and ted will be taking home the top step of the constructors championship if the scout down finishes in his third podium of the season Endy as well, racking up another podium in this league, finishing in third place and will claim his uh, third podium as well. Ted will finish just off the podium in fourth place. Webson, after overtaking Kyla Love on the final lap, finishes in fifth place. Kyla Love will settle for sixth. But huge congratulations for Ted and Wolfie, who are your constructors' champions of season four the third constructors champions no the fourth constructors champions that uh, have been crowned we didn't have one in season one but we had one in season two two in season three because we had two leagues and uh the first constructors championship to be wrapped up this season as uh Melix Andils takes the old uh, the new turn 10 uh ops for drifting on a very worn set of soft tyres in his Mercedes AMG. Finishes in seventh place, it's last on track, but it's going to be points nevertheless with 13 seconds worth of time. Penalties rounds the final few corners and uh, we'll finish this race in seventh place. But it's Wolfie who wins, a familiar face and a familiar helmet winning the race here in Spain. The scout down finishes in second and Andy rounds out the podium in third. Ted finishes in fourth, Webson's in fifth, Kyle Love in sixth, and Melix Andy's round out the grid in seventh. I hope you enjoyed this race. It's such a good race here in Spain, and I hope is more is to come in the next week at Tokyo Expressway for the second wet race of the season. I'm going to save that replay, and rather than looking at the standings, uh, let's see if Wolfie or Ted might, might give us some donuts. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, it doesn't look like we're getting any donuts today, I'm afraid. Um, Dan might give us some donuts though. But uh, yeah, that's going to be all from me here today in Spain. Make sure to tune in throughout the week for the F1 races that will be heading off uh, to Hungary for those ones. And Dan is providing us with a few donuts on the track, celebrating the, firstly his podium and probably congratulating Wolfie and Ted in the process. But that's been all from me. I've been XNG and I'll see you next week. Goodbye from me. just thought I'd leave this on the screen for a little bit while we've got a few more people tuning in but uh, it's donuts for the track here comes your constructors championship leader and victor wolfie 907 going through turn one uh, is celebrating his teammate not currently on the racetrack but uh, it is team forget me not racing who win the constructors championship and hopefully guys you've enjoyed this race but it is going to be goodbye from me and I'll see you next week. Have a good evening.